What's up, everybody? Pico CTF 2022. Let's get to it. Hop over to my computer screen here. I am working on the Pico CTF website. We have a Operation Oni challenge up next in the forensics category. And let's take a look and see what we're up against. This is a deployable, launchable instance, so we'll go ahead and get that started. And the description here is download the disk image, find the key, and log into the remote machine. You can go ahead and download the image here, and we can remote into the machine. Interestingly enough, okay. Uh, where is the key file? Oh, that's what we have to find. Find the key and then log in. Let's do it. We can go ahead and move into the forensics category. Let's make a directory for Operation Oni. And let's w get this down. Looks like it is gz compressed. So again, that's gzip. We can go ahead and g unzip that. There we go. Takes a, li a little bit of time, just a quick second. And now we have a disk image on our machine. Uh, what I'll end up doing is actually run autopsy yet again, because that was kind of nice. It was able to go ahead and just, hey, create a uh, simple case, we'll call it Operation Oni, and that will let me carve out and extract files as needed. Uh, just keep going, invalid case. Oh, come on, new case, good. Now you must create a host for this case. Cool. Does it need an investigator name to be able to do that? You silly Dumbo? Yeah, you already exist. Oh, come on, whatever, it's going. Sweet, yeah, just hit okay. Add host, host one, add host, add image, add image file, and we need the full path of this. So let me create a new terminal. Uh, in the previous video, I actually still had a other terminal open. So let me just go move into this and let's run real path on this fella with that. We have his absolute path and I can just slap it in here. Hit next, totally fine for just about everything. Totally fine for just about everything. We did all this already in a previous video. So what we'll end up doing is just analyzing what looks like the biggest file size partition. This is probably going to be the file system, in which case we'll go ahead and click analyze. And I saw, hey, we could analyze in any specific mode above. Let's look for file analysis and okay. I do want to expand the directories on the left-hand side. Let's see if there's anything worthwhile in here. Inside of home, nothing. Uh, I wanna look for a potential key. Uh, maybe an opt, no. I'm gonna assume this might be in, ooh, a temporary directory, no. Some odd uh, Unix kind of things here though. Anything in temp, nope. In the last video when we were using this, we found this in the roots home directory, which I think, is that what we're gonna end up using to log in? No, CTF player at Saturn at PicoCTF.net. Okay, so we might be able to find it somewhere else, but let's keep digging. Let's go see if there would be other, any, ooh, ooh, backslash key looks kind of interesting, and there is an afkey.ko. Oh, and a deleted file. This deleted file looks kind of promising. Yeah, let's go ahead and click on that. And it was able to pull this thing down. Ooh, there is a hex file, but this is an elf binary. That's really weird to me. What is afkey.ko? Nope, something weird. Ah, uh, I, I realize I'm inside of like slash net in some other directory, so I don't know if that's exactly what I want here. Here's slash keys, encrypted keys. Oh, uh, there's another one. I don't think that's gonna be an SSH key that we would use to log in though. Still a temp in some directories, there's nothing really there. How about in root? Ooh, root has a .ssh directory and that might very well be promising. Look, if you aren't familiar, SSH is the secure shell protocol, in which case you can connect and remote into another Linux machine or Windows, it's accessible now on Windows. Uh, normally that is password authentication, although it's strongly encouraged to use a public and private key pair that can be generated and used. Um, SSH stores things in the local home directory for a user, and it has a .SSH hidden folder, hidden key. Looks like it actually has an ID file and a public key file created. You can tell this is a .pub to see its public key, and you can also see the private key that doesn't have the .pub file extension. In which case, ooh, we have this right here. 
So let me copy this, or we could download it if we really, really wanted to. Uh, but there's an interesting gimmick and a one idiosyncrasy that I want to footstomp and underscore for you because you might not know. Uh, a, a private key requires that there is a new line or an empty new line at the very, very end. So you see me highlighting this last section here, the space at the bottom. That is absolutely necessary or else it'll tell you like, hey, invalid format. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually make a directory or file for this. We'll call it ID, and that's what, ED25519. I'll slap this in. And note, line eight is where I have a empty new line. If I try and actually leave it without that, it will whine and complain. Let me show you that, just hopefully so you can believe me and I'm not just talking a whole lot of uh, hot air. If we were to go grab from the SSH uh, command present on the Pico CTF homepage, note, it's gonna whine and, tell at, and yell at me like, hey, I don't actually have a key file represented with the right file name. So we'll need to specify that as our ID uh, field there. Again, we're using TACP to specify the port. I accidentally clobbered that. Hit enter, but it will yell at me like, hey, this is an unprotected private key file. You will need to make sure that it has enough permission set that it can be trusted. Um, it's normal and standard and kind of tradition that, look, SSH private keys are not uh, supposed to be accessible by others because it is meant to be a private key. In which case, if you actually take out, take a look at the file permissions, sure, our ID ED2559 whatever is world readable in the permissions described here. In the set of three, read, write, and execute, read, write, and execute, and read, write, and execute, this goes for owner, group, and everyone or the world. So everyone is able to read with that R permission, read the uh, file. You, we could go ahead and actually use chmod. Oftentimes how we created the executable bit for binaries, we could actually remove the read bit on our ID file. With that done, we can see, ooh, now we, now we can't even read it though. Whoops, okay. So let's try to use user plus R, a U plus R. Does that make it so that now we can read it? It does. And what if we wanted to actually use this? Okay, cool. Now it's read, write, and everyone else would be able to access it. Now I did that with like adding the specific specifiers with, hey, plus R or W or X, whether it's user or group or all for everyone. Uh, note that chmod can also very easily take in an octal representation or 600 and that say, sure, we have read and write. Uh, I think, I don't know if that includes executable or not, but for the second and third digits here, those are going to represent what could it be used for with uh, group and everyone. Zero will specify, hey, there are no permissions set. So if I run that yet again, that's gonna give me the exact same setup as uh, what we had previously. But if I were to change that to something like, oh, 400, or 400, now it is only readable by me and not writable. Uh, if you wanted to get into like the Unix permissions calculator, there are a lot of resources for that online. I believe four uh, is what's gonna give you a baseline of reading something. Uh, a one will give you just strictly an executable, in which case, hey, you see only that is executable for me. Uh, but if we were to make it one plus four, it'll be 500 or five in that case, right? And that will be read and execute but the two is gonna give me the availability to write something just as well. In which case we saw, oh, the four plus two, six, read and write, and you might also see seven for read, write, and execute. It is standard for SSH private keys to be 600 or 600 for their permissions as they're set. Now, we could go ahead and finally use our SSH command and that should allow us to work with it. However, note that it whines, this is an invalid format. That is the gimmick where this absolutely has to have an empty blank new line at the very, very end. So I've hit Control S on my keyboard to save that. And now, let me try and run that same command. Boom, we are logged in and we are the CTF player. I'll go ahead and type ls. Looks like we do have a flag.txt in the current directory and that is it. Key Sleuth gives us a quick and easy flag, a quick and easy win, all thanks to Autopsy and how it could pretty easily carve out files for us. Oh, 
we'll paste that in donezo now i i know sure that was kind of neat that was kind of cool but if you didn't want to use autopsy i wonder if it's worth trying to carve out all the files in the file system in a separate way in a different way of going about it look if, if you just kind of wanted to the flag and came here for that quick solution more than welcome hey jump out of the video now we'll explore some potential extracurricular stuff i've mentioned other tools we could use like oh binwalk or uh, foremost let me make a directory files and i can copy the disk image into that directory i just i'm doing that so i'm not clobbering up the entire directory that i'm in granted foremost and other utilities will create a new directory for extracted files but I want to make sure, hey, we're just kind of separating things. If I were to run foremost on a disk image, it'll try and cut through and carve out where it might find any specific files. Interestingly enough, it found exe files and htm files. That found some Windows executable, which is a bit odd. How about in the htm directory? That is data. Not all that interesting. Looks like it's just bytes. Uh, I could try and run strings on that. Ooh, yeah, okay, so some oddball thing. So foremost didn't do a whole lot for us. Part of me wonders if I could use binwalk. I'll use binwalk, uh, binwalk on the disk.img file. And now note, it might find and pick up on these file systems, but it's not gonna carve out files unless I specify tack E for extract. Run that. And you'll get the same output as it digs through and cuts through things, but it's actually going to be pulling out and carving out things into an extracted directory. The same way that Foremost created an output directory, now we have a new one specific to binwalk. Let's see if that actually can keep track of things. Ooh, 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 yeah. It made an ext root zero and an ext root. I read those backwards. <laughs> Let's move into ext root zero because part of me wonders if that is like the file system like autopsy found, and it turns out it is. You can see the regular things that you might just as well see on a regular root of a Linux file system. If I just ls slash, you'll normally see a bin directory and it's set red directory, lib, root of course, root's home directory, sbin, user, var, etc. So we could then just move into the root directory and when I hit ls, there's nothing there, but again, remind you, it is an dot ssh directory with that dot prefix it is hidden and not going to be readily shown by the ls command move into dot ssh there are the same files that we saw within autopsy so binwalk might have been able to help us track that down if we wanted to dig through the file system just as well it was really nice though to be able to use autopsy and get that visual and kind of hey click on stuff and explore other analysis things that we might need to so again being a forensics challenge, I would totally opt for using Autopsy and SleuthKit for this sort of thing. Uh, with that said, we, what, still have the flag, right? Do I have that in my clipboard? I do. So let me just paste that into a flag.txt. We'll go ahead and save this to NARC that is complete. Close out of that tab, and we have completed that challenge. Another 300 points on the board. We are very, very close to the end of page four. We are cruising in at over 7,000 points on the board. And man, uh, I hope you folks are enjoying this. I know we have been cruising through one challenge after the next, but I hope this is still pretty good and pretty fun. Uh, did I actually, oh shoot, I hit save when I should have hit finish. So let's do that. Challenges to complete. And that's that, everybody. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new or hope you just got a little bit more familiar with tools that you might use. And with that, we're done here. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the drill. I'll see you in the next video, everybody. I love you. Take care. <laughs>